In this course, you would have observed that our focus is mainly on computational models that try to solve decision problems. The problems for which the answer is either a yes or a no. But the real life programs do more than just print yes or no, right? Then why aren't we focusing on them? The answer lies in the fact that all the functional problems can be reformulated as decision problems. So if we build a theoretical framework that applies to decision problems, it would automatically apply to functional problems as well. All right, formally a decision problem is a yes or no question on an infinite set of inputs. As we established earlier that Turing machines are as powerful as any computational model out there, we can use Turing machines to determine the decidability of a given decision problem. We know that a Turing machine by definition and design has an accept state and a reject state. It is possible that the Turing machine can end up in an accept state on an input string. It is possible that the Turing machine can end up on a reject state on an input string. It is also possible that the Turing machine can end up in an infinite loop on an input string. The language of the Turing machine is the set of strings for which the Turing machine ends up in an accept state. If a Turing machine is a decider, then all the strings in sigma star either in, end up in the accept or a reject state. And the language of the Turing machine is called a decidable language. The class of undecidable languages is a bit tricky to understand. Turns out that for few languages, there exists a Turing machine that always ends up in accept state for the strings that belong to the language, but may end up in reject state or loop forever on strings that are not in the language. So you cannot get a definitive no for the strings that are not in the language. Such languages are called Turing recognizable or recursively enumerable languages because at least you will get a yes for the strings that belong to the language. And then there are few undecidable languages for which there exists no Turing machine that definitively ends up in accept state or a reject state. Hence, Turing machines cannot even say yes for the input strings that belong to a certain language. These are the class of problems that are completely undecidable. Let us look at an example for a decidable language. ADFA is the language with strings that are encodings of the formal descriptions of all the possible DFAs in existence and the corresponding words that they accept. We know that a DFA can be defined by a phi tuple if you were able to construct and simulate a DFA by looking at a phi tuple using a pencil, paper, and an eraser, you can assume that a Turing machine can also construct and simulate it given appropriate control instructions. Here is the informal description of the Turing machine M that decides a DFA. First step, simulate B on input W. If the simulation ends up in the accept state of the simulated DFA, then end up in the accept state on the Turing machine. If it ends up in a non-accepting state in the simulated DFA, then end up in a reject state on Turing machine. For a string of a finite length, the finite automaton simulation ends in finite number of steps on the Turing machine. Hence, a DFA is decidable. So you get a definitive yes or no answer for all the strings that are basically encodings of a DFA and the word that they accept. Perfect. Now, how about a NFA? 
Turns out you can algorithmically convert an NFA to DFA using subset construction method, which you have learned earlier. Anything that can be algorithmically computed can be computed on a Turing machine. So you add an extra step of this NFA to DFA conversion and repeat the same procedure cited earlier. Now, how about a regex? Again, there exists an algorithmic procedure to convert a regular expression to an NFA, which can be converted to DFA. Hence, a regex is decidable. Turns out, even context-free languages are decidable languages. Here is the relationship among class of languages that we have seen so far.